What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, I'm gonna teach you all how to make the world's best sun-dried tomatoes. We're not gonna be using the sun, we're gonna be taking the tomatoes right from our garden and using the modern day amenities that we have in our kitchen to help us speed up the process and still result in a very, very high quality finished product. So I hope you guys are gonna enjoy. With that being said, let's jump on in today's video. When it comes to crops from the garden, I don't think there's a crop that I like to lock in the freshness more for the off season than tomatoes. When it comes to tomatoes, we'll do things like pizza sauce, spaghetti sauce, we'll do whole canned tomatoes, and we'll also do sun-dried tomatoes. Now, I got this recipe from a family friend of ours. Uh, they're actually uh, fully Italian. <laughs> they are fully, fully Italian. And uh, I went down into, uh, into their grandmother's basement and what I saw was absolutely incredible. Um, in her grandmother's basement, there was, or her Nona's basement, I should say, was just, it was awe-inspiring. My jaw hit the floor when I walked down there. In her basement was basically a reading nook, and next to the reading nook was a coffee machine for making things like espresso, and then next to that was this long wall that was probably, I'd say 15 feet, 20 feet long, and from floor to ceiling was pastas, homemade pastas that were dried and put into bags. There was bags of flour, uh, you know, double zero flour and bread flour and, and just the most, uh, you know, uh, there was, uh, there was uh, semolina flour and things like that, the most Italian flours you can imagine. Then just above that, you got into the canned goods and it was, it was it was, I wish I could have taken a picture of it. I was back in high school when I toured her basement, but it was absolutely amazing. I did do a video on how to can tomatoes the Nona way, and you can go check that video out, same person. And in her basement was these canned goods, and it started with her pizza sauce. And it went from pizza sauce, then transitioned to spaghetti sauce. And then from spaghetti sauce, it went to just crushed tomatoes. And then from crushed tomatoes, went to whole canned tomatoes. And then after that, it transitioned into herbs and sun-dried tomatoes and things uh, basically preserved in oil. She pulled one of these sun-dried tomatoes out of this olive oil and the flavor, oh my gosh, the flavor. I've never tasted anything more it was, it, was, it was emotional for me. <laughs> As a garden lover, it was emotional. And so uh, I have been on a journey to replicate that ever since. And I asked her, I said, would you mind sharing with me your recipe? She said, absolutely, I'll tell you everything I do. The only thing that you have to do is come help me. So one day I went over to her house and I helped her do it because uh, if you know anything about Italian families, they're big and they're fully involved when it comes to uh, putting things away. Uh, for the off season. So I uh, went over to her garden, we picked a bunch of tomatoes, and I helped her turn them into sun-dried tomatoes. And uh, so I'm gonna share with you that recipe. So with that being said, I gotta pick these tomatoes. Coming in close, check this out, it's crazy. Then we're gonna take these and head into the kitchen. All right, these are the red centiflor tomato, and you can already see, I mean, there's just so many that they're just falling on the ground. There are hundreds and hundreds hundreds and hundreds on these plants. There's so many. This is one of my favorite varieties of cherry tomato just because it's unbelievably productive, very sweet, medium acid, uh, a relatively thin skin. So it's not a thick skinned cherry tomato. I don't really like thick skins on my cherry tomatoes, but the skin is thin. It has a great pop, just kind of average amount of seeds for a cherry tomato. So it's not very seedy and the flavor is so incredible. Look at this. Look at that. I've never seen anything like that. I'll tell you what, if you have never tried the red centiflor tomato, it is one to try. We actually grew these from Emma Gardener Seeds. You can go join the wait list. Uh, we might even have some still in stock, but you can go check them out over at migardener.com. And uh, it is one of the most productive cherry tomatoes that we've ever come across. Um, the name centiflor basically means, uh, it means thousand blossoms or thousand flowers. And so it really lives up to its name. It's unbelievable. Tell me that is not crazy. These are literally just bunches of cherry tomatoes that I picked. Isn't that insane? <laughs> Isn't that absolutely insane? Red centiflor, baby. 
red center floor. If you haven't tried it, try it next year. All right, just got back from the garden with a giant bowl of tomatoes, so let's go. The first thing you wanna to do to get ready for making sun-dried tomatoes is you wanna wash your tomatoes. This is a really important step, and despite the fact that they came from an organic garden where I know what they were grown with, what they were sprayed with, you know, how they were grown from seed all the way to harvest, it's still very, very important to wash your fruit when you harvest it. There's lots of stuff that you can eat right now that isn't a problem, but you keep it in a jar. You keep it in a jar for six months to a year, it might become a problem. So when it comes to food safety, washing your produce is important. After you wash your produce, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna destem the tomatoes and cut them in half. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna preheat my oven. My oven is already preheating to 200 degrees. All right, so we just got the tomatoes all sliced, and or at least half of them, sorry. Um, but I wanna get these in the oven, and then I'll work on the rest. But we're just gonna be adding some salt. I'm just gonna be throwing some salt on real quick. That's gonna help draw that moisture out, help them dry out that much faster. And some pepper. Then the final thing is I'm just going to coat them in a little bit of olive oil. Not a lot, just a little bit. And obviously, since we're gonna be storing them in olive oil, it's not gonna really change much, but it's gonna help them from sticking to the, to the pan. So we're gonna throw some olive oil in. These are all just eyeball measurements. I'd say if I had to throw in to this size bowl here, I probably threw in a half teaspoon of salt and probably a half teaspoon of cracked black pepper and maybe about a tablespoon or so of olive oil. All right, we're just gonna take them and we're literally going to just layer them. <laughs> this is probably the, the process that takes the longest is we're just gonna put them all face up. You want them face up, not face down, so they dry all consistently and they dry fast. So I'm gonna get this all done and then I'll get back with you guys when we're finished. There we go, check it out. One tray down and one tray more to go. We're back. <laughs> the shot you just saw was about a week ago. It's been about a week, but that's because we had some pretty eventful things happen. So welcome to the world. I want to introduce Enzo. It's our new baby boy. So we are over the moon to have a new baby boy and uh, a new garden helper. So uh, everybody welcome Enzo to the world down in the comments box down below. And uh, with that, we're gonna get on to today's video because it's been about a week. <laughs> so the sun-dried tomatoes haven't gone anywhere. They've stayed sun-dried, but uh, the nice thing is that once they're dry, they don't really go bad. So I'm gonna hand off Enzo to Mrs. Emma Gardner. We're gonna get rolling with the next part of this video. All right, so yeah, so we got the sun-dried tomatoes. They actually were in the oven the day that Mrs. Emma Gardner went into labor. And so uh, we had them in the oven and there was about two and a half hours left. And I said, well, we gotta go when we gotta go. Um, I left them up to my in-laws. They were here visiting and I said, all right guys, uh, the, when the timer goes off, just pull them out. And so they were in the oven for about four and a half hours. Now they've been sitting out for about a week, but again, they're sun-dried. They're, once they're dried and the moisture content has been reduced to a certain level, they're gonna be fine sitting out for a week, week and a half, no problem at all. But we wanna make them shelf stable for like six to 12 months. And so um, what we're gonna do is we're going to actually pan them up. Now, if you are totally fine with them in this state right now, um, they're, you know, they're awesome. I mean, they're very dry, they're leathery, they're great. But I wanna make them shelf stable uh, for a longer period of time. So what we've done is we have just about a gallon of water to about a cup and a half of vinegar, and it's coming to a boil. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take these sun-dried tomatoes and put them back in the vinegar water. And what that's going to do is it's going to rehydrate them a little bit, but it's gonna rehydrate them with some vinegar water, which is gonna actually bring up the acidity and make them more shelf stable so that they don't go spoil, or so they don't spoil and go rancid in the oil that we're gonna pack them in. Now, the other thing that we're gonna do is we're going to heat up our oil. Now, it's really important that you do this because oil itself needs to also be heated up. And we're also gonna can them, we're gonna put them in a hot water bath even after this step, 
but we're gonna heat up our oil. This is just regular olive oil, and we're gonna heat that up to about 225 degrees. We're gonna take our sun-dried tomatoes, and we're gonna pop them in the boiling water for just five minutes. All right, one additional little step here is while our tomatoes are boiling away, we're gonna sterilize our jars. It's really important that you do that just to reduce the risk of foodborne illness. So we're gonna actually sterilize our jars, rings and lids. And another thing is you don't wanna reuse your lids. Um, rings and jars are totally fine to reuse as long as there's no rust on the ring itself. It's totally fine. But the lids themselves should be uh, brand new every single time. It's because when you pop them open, stuff like that, they can get easily dented and that can cause the seal to go bad. So, and I'll post a link in the description box down below where uh, you can get some and they're very inexpensive. And um, it's just something that you should, be you should not be reusing uh, if you want to take food safety to the next level. So that being said, we're going to sterilize these and we'll get back with you in about two minutes. All right, so my tomatoes have been boiling for about five minutes in the water and vinegar solution. Now all we're going to do is just get a slotted spoon and then I like to put an empty bowl with a colander above it just to really further drain that water out. And we're gonna press them out. I mean, you're gonna get a lot of this water out because water and oil don't mix. So you want as little of that as possible. Good. Good, actually a little bit over that so I'll let that cool a tiny bit. We're at 200 and th about 237 degrees. So, awesome. So now that the oil is ready, we're simply going to pack our jars. We're gonna take them and put them in loosely. You don't wanna pack them down because you want the oil to be able to move throughout the jar. So that way it reduces a lot of air gaps. All right, so now that we have our jars packed with our sun-dried tomatoes, we're simply going to add them, add the oil to the jars we'll get ready to, uh, to put them in a hot water bath. I'm just taking a chopstick, but you can use a wooden skewer or anything like that. I'm just kind of like, kind of poking it around, reducing any air gaps. You just don't want to use anything metal because um, it's just, again, uh, you don't want to risk scratching or uh, damaging the glass jars. So um, once that water, or once the uh, oil level kind of settles down a little bit, it'll leave a little more room to fill up with some more oil. All right, so it's pretty much done. We just need to wipe down the rim of the jars so that we have a good seal. We're gonna put the lids and the rings on, just two finger tight, don't need to wrench it down. And then after that, we're gonna drop it into a hot water bath for about 10 minutes. So we got the hot water bath here. We're gonna get that going uh, to a nice rolling boil. We're gonna drop our uh, we're gonna drop our, um, our jars in, and we're gonna, again, we're gonna just hot water bath them for 10 minutes, and then pull them out, let them cool, and you should hear that nice And when you hear that sound, you're good to go for about six to 12 months. All right, and there we go. Check it out. Isn't that beautiful? Sun-dried tomatoes, I should say sun-dried tomatoes, right from the garden, and we are now preserving them for the off season. I cannot tell you how amazing these things are in pastas and in sauces. And uh, I mean, they're just so versatile. Use them as a spread on some sourdough bread and uh, use them um, you know, as a, as a tapenade or put them with some fish. And it's just it's so versatile, so incredible. And it came right from your garden. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you guys later. Bye.